are BC 55 News at 6, the number one source for all things at Brother Rice. This evening, news anchor Casey Hopkins, reporters Charlie Green, Evan Palmer, weather with Professor Kevin Sunshine, and sports with Matt Mankey. BRBC 55. Good evening. I'm Casey Hopkins. Our top story tonight comes all the way from Stockholm, Sweden, where intellectual senior Mark Freund received the Nobel Prize in Physics earlier in the week for his new theory in astrophysics. The theory states that if all matter is composed of elements, then all... Wait, hold on a minute. I just received word that Freund was stripped of his medal. It appears that Freund stole the theory from closet genius senior Sean Justice, who discovered the idea after unsuccessfully trying to create water out of dog urine and Gatorade in his broken down garage. After Freund heard about the experiment, he quickly bargained for the idea by giving Sean two tickets to last year's WrestleMania. BRBC 55 will have more on the story as it continues later tonight. Right from our own backyard, Brother Rice custodian Kenny Williams won this week's Mega Million Lottery. The prize is believed to be over $5 billion. Here's Evan Palmer with more on the story. Kenny Williams no, will no longer need his broom, pan, mop, or giant key ring for the friendly and popular maintenance man. With soon cash in a lottery ticket that will enable him to, re to retire from his position at Brother Rice, Kenny purchased a gold ticket from the local Sammy supermarket located on 95th Street in Evergreen Park. Initially, Williams believed that the news to be a farce. However, he soon realized that the winning ticket was in his, his hands and he was on the verge of becoming a rare custodian millionaire. The question now is what the overwhelming Williams would do with the money. Well, he has some fantastic ideas. Thank you, Evan. Kenny, what were your first thoughts when you saw the winning numbers? I couldn't believe it. It knocked me over. Actually, I never would believe I would win any type of money like that. Any ideas on planning to spend the money? Well, I would buy a new car. Uh, I would buy a house for my mom. And uh, I would donate some of the money to Brother Rice High School to build a wrestling room for the wrestlers. It was very nice of you, Kenny. Uh, any other ideas? Well, thank you. I don't know. I'll probably take a few trips. And uh, I'll decide after the end how I'm going to spend that money. Well, you heard it here, folks. Reporting live from the library, Evan Palmer from BRBC 55 News. Up next, Professor Kevin Sunshine will share unseasonal 10-day forecast in BRBC 55 weather. Actually, here he is live in the weather zone with a preview. Professor? Professor, uh, you're on camera. I'm on camera? God damn it. Looks like temperatures will stay astoundingly low throughout the week. Old man winter won't leave spring alone. I'll be back with gripping details later. It's good. Just... I won't be here for the weather today. I have to attend a sponge bath. So my young whippersnapper, Charlie Green, will be doing it for me. I'll be reading it still, from the back. Plenty of sunshine today, but we experienced a rather chilly day for this being spring. The high temperature was only 37 and it felt like 29 because of the steady northeast winds. Today reminded me of March 29, 1954. Boy, it was a doozy. The heat was turned off in my house for spring and the water pipes froze and cracked the, in the basement, ruining the carpet. The old pilfered said. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, the weather. Today was darn cold and tomorrow will be a little better with few clouds. A high of 42. Now a 10-day forecast. Wednesday and Thursday still cold with some high clouds or some clouds high into the mid upper 40s. Friday will warm up as we hit the 50s. Saturday temperatures will stay in the 50s with nothing but sun. The ideal day of the 10 by 5. But this weekend ends on a sour note as the Pilford Shack arrives and its fairest rain shower for Sunday. The rainy weather will spill onto the work week and temperatures will be in high 40s and mid 50s, which is near normal. That's your weather. Unless the meeting's held. Hi, I'm John Green. I come to my local Brother Rice library to learn and read books. Hey, Brian. Hey, what's up? You want to return this book? Uh, yes, and I will take the usual, please. All right. Wait a minute. I need to see your ID. How do I know you really are a sophomore? 
Sophomore John, John Green. Green identification. Class there you are. It works for me. <clears throat> Well, let me let me scan these for you, John. And when will you have these uh, finished? Tomorrow. A speed reader. Yes, I love my books. I love John Grisham. Well, that's good to know. Come again, John. Thank you. I love Brother Rice Library. If it weren't for the Brother Rice Library, I would not be where I am today. <laughs> Senior Tim Mankey etched his name into the record books with an unusual feat. With the conclusion of the men's NCAA Division I basketball tournament, Mankey became the first recorded or known person to fill out a perfect tournament bracket. That's right, 67 games, all predicted correctly. The chances of this occurring, according to LasVegasPregame.com, are 1 billion to 1. Congrats to Tim Mankey, the ultimate bracketologist. I just went, I just went with my gut and hope for the best. I guess my advice for picking bra for uh, filling out a bracket is uh, do your homework, listen to the experts, watch ESPN, and always, pick, of course, pick the Duke Blue Devils. In other news, for years, Brother Rice students have fervently pleaded theology teacher Al Albanese to tell his renowned stories, and almost always he stubbornly denied them of the entertaining tales. However, this is no longer the case. Students can now have nearly 300 pages worth of these stories at their fingertips as Albanese have skated in. His tell all autobiography, Minus Five, an L. Albanese antidote, went on sale today at the Brother Rice Bookstore and wherever books are sold. The thrilling read includes the rarely told New York story and the powerful Fuji story. Albanese will participate in the book signing held at the Brother Rice Bookstore this Saturday. Tonight, one man is lucky to be alive, while another is a hero. During today's six-period lunch, brave junior Harry McCarthy saved legendary Brother Rice varsity soccer coach Nick Marcoulin from choking on his lunch. McCarthy coincidentally strolled past the alien coach, who, gra who was grasping for air and coughing with a chicken bite lodged in his throat. He saw that coach was in distress and rushed him to perform the saving Heimlich maneuver. After McCarthy performed the timely action, Marcoulin coughed up the hazardous chicken bite and resumed his storytelling. Coach is going to be fine, and McCarthy will be considered Crusader of the Week the rest of the school year. And here's Matt Makey with the sports preview. Thank you, Corey. Next in sports, he wanted to hear from the biggest figure in Brother Rice Athletics, and now you will. BBR, BRBC 55's Charlie Green sits down with the volleyball stand-up. Also update you with the latest Crusader Athletics news and notes. All of this and more after this commercial break. Hey man, I want to do some frogs. I got that cocaine. I got that crack. Drugs aren't for me, it's a brownie. No, Charlie. buzzing about the unlikely performance in last night's basketball victory. With starters Dan Shee, Garrett O'Neill, Alex Majewski, and Sean Fitzpatrick, and most of the bench out with Pink Eye, a forfeit in the opening round of the state playoffs was inevitable. However, the IHSA did a, the Crusaders a favor, allowing them to dress senior, senior manager Dave Reynos in order to complete the five-man team, and therefore making it possible for them to compete. Reynolds was not just an extra for a bystander. He was the player of the game, scoring 38 points and powering the Crusaders of, the, powering the Crusaders of victory and tallying 21 rebounds. Head coach Pat Richardson has not ruled out asking the IHSA if the hidden talent could play in Friday's regional final. Varsity water, water Polo opened the season with a giant splash. They defeated the St. Rita Mustangs by the outrageous score of 87 to nothing. Seniors Nick Joslin and Kyle Pakula combined for 78 of those goals. The game became so ugly, in fact, that the embarrassed Mustang players jumped out of the pool and left Brother Rice in the middle of the last period. Now, the much-anticipated sit-down with junior volleyball player and ex-journalism student Joe Pachinkus. 
Here is BRBC 55 Insider Charlie Green with Mr. Pachinkus. We're here uh, live with Joe Pachinskus. Just made the volleyball team. Judas, first of all, congratulations on making the volleyball team. Thank and you. What are your expectations for this season? Uh, we have a pretty good team. We face a lot of hard competition this year at regionals. We're going to be seeing some hard teams, so expectations are winning the state, but anything less will be a failure in my nice. eyes. Absolutely excellent. Now, what position will you be playing this year, and how can Joe Pachinskis help the team win Catholic League? I'll be playing libero or a defensive specialist. I'll help by doing whatever my coaches need me to do, if it's supporting from the bench or making plays, playing my best, playing my role on the team. Now, when you decided to leave journalism, were you happy about leaving us with all your unfinished work, Judas? I wasn't happy about that, but I also had to. I had some other more important classes that I had to take care of, oh, and I needed a study hall. So we're not important. Not as important as my well, that's, academic that's classes. That's good enough. That's good enough. Um, does it make you feel good to bail on your classmates? No, it does not. I feel really terrible about that, Miss England slash Van Assen. Uh. Sorry it went down the way it did. Hmm. During your time in journalism, you made absolutely no progress on the yearbook and completely failed to help us in any way. What went through your mind during this time period? Um, honestly, I wasn't, giving, I wasn't given much really to do yearbook-wise because all my spreads were in the spring. Uh, I mean, we did a lot of time debating on who's better, the Bears or Packers, and obviously the Bears are. So that. That, took up a, <laughs> that took up a lot of my time. Okay. Well, Joe, congratulations on making the volleyball team, and best of luck to you in your season this year. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Some powerful words by Big Joe. In sports briefs, the Chicago Blackhawks, in need of some depth for the playoff run, invited the outstanding one-win varsity hockey team to try out for the franchise. And finally, chess team leader Andy Roberts dislocated his right thumb in a frantic match. He is now lost for the remainder of the season. Thank you for joining us this evening. Now you know the latest in Brother Rice news. For Casey, Evan, Kevin, and Charlie, I'm Matt Mankey. We'll see you at 10. Have a pleasant, wonderful, and fantastic evening. Bob Saget Production. <laughs> Thank you for viewing. Bob Saget.